the, at Humanity and Health uh, Medical Group in Hong Kong, China. Uh, he will give first the presentation of his work. Professor Lau, please. Thank you, the Professor Lin. Uh, I'm really uh, delighted to receive this um, uh, prestigious award, Okuda Omata Distinguished Award this year, 2023, from APASO. Um, in the next 20 minutes, I would like to present uh, a topic, uh, how I have performed as a hepatologist uh, in Asia Pacific region for the past 30 years. Uh, first of all, I would like to acknowledge and thank you uh, my late Professor Sir David Todd, who recruited me to the Depart University Department of Medicine in 1989 in Hong Kong, Queen Mary Hospital. Well, I have been embarking on the functional cure of chronic hepatitis B. It is a very important topic because with the loss of service antigens, we can induce durable off-therapy disease remissions in those patients with chronic hepatitis B and reduce the liver-related morbidity and mortality. The initiation starts right here in Taiwan in 2004 when we formed the APASO consensus on the management of chronic hepatitis B expert meeting at Yang Ming San National Park. Learning from my colleagues and also from US NIH KOL meeting in chronic hepatitis B dated back to 2006. These people are all very valuable colleagues to me, my teachers, and we interact intensely over the past 25 to 30 years for, to achieve functional cure for chronic hepatitis B. So what is the definitions of a cure for chronic hepatitis B? Very simple, we want a therapy and to induce loss of service energy because that will signify sustained or therapy disease remissions. At this point, I would like to thank um, the encouragement by Professor Yun Fen Liao and also late Professor Yao Guangbi in letting me understanding the importance of host immunity against the virus to achieve functional cure. We know what we are, but know what we may be by Shakespeare. That was, the, this picture was taken almost 20 years ago. Having learned from groups of people, my teachers, my, my senior in hepatology, we understand the importance of functional cure as signified by the loss of service antigens. Back in primary hospitals, 20, uh, 20 years ago, actually more than 20 years ago, we have an opportunity to make the observations of a functional cure via adoptive immunity transfer in Chinese with chronic hepatitis B. Those patients who are service engine positive with hematological malignancy receive allogenic bone marrow transplant from siblings, usually very HRA identical with natural immunity can induce a cure in those patients. This is very important studies because it shows that a restoration of the immunity against the virus can lead to a cure. And this is multi-specific uh, response and also it includes the innate immune response. So it is a broad spectrum restoration of immunity against the virus, which is of great importance to control it, to induce S0 conversions and to reduce the subsequent liver-related mortality and morbidity. But to take, to use allogeneic bone marrow transplantations is very risky, uh, carries a high risk of morbidity and mortality. Having learned from Professor Yun Fen Liao and also to Professor Yao Wangbi and others, uh, we embarked on the understandings of the use of immune therapy for chronic hepatitis B. Me, myself, together with a group of investigators, the PEC interferons alpha-2A chronic hepatitis B study groups, uh, to, and try to you know, investigate the use of peculated interferon alpha-2A 20 years ago in the treatments of chronic hepatitis B, resulting in two positive phase three studies, one in E positive and one in E negative studies, led by myself and uh, Patrick Marcelin from Paris. 
Then it follows with a wave of registrations of new drugs, taking another path to control the virus. That is nucleoside or nucleotide analogs. Now we are phasing, we have uh, weaponized with new drugs with high resistant barriers such as tenovavir, antigavir, and TAF. How about the functional cure? With the use of monotherapies of pegylated interferon alpha-2A for 48 weeks, the cure rates for surface antigen loss is only three to 8%. So this is very low. We also, at the same time, start to have high resistant barriers used. But using this monotherapy, the surface antigen loss rate is very, very low, less than 1% per year. And then in the past 10, 15 years, various investigators use various combination therapies, either de novo, add-on, or switch to the use of pegylated interferon alpha-2A to understand whether this could improve the surface energy loss rate. Suffice to say, the result is still largely unsatisfactory. Less than one third at most could achieve functional cure. Recently, a group of investigators led by Professor Ling Qing from Wuhan, China. They studied such 96 weeks of PEC interferon alpha-2A to a group of chronic hepatitis B patients with treated with nukes. I think this is a very important study. They examined 257 chronic hepatitis B patients on nukes who has been on nukes for one to five years with serum HPV DNA, less than 1,000 copies per mu, and surface antigen by quantitations less than 3,000 IU per mu. 80 of them were randomly assigned to the 96 weeks of PEC alpha 2A therapy with a 24 weeks of follow up. 21 of them, that is 26.3% of those patients, have sustained service energy loss and therefore functional cure. It signifies the importance of having biomarkers such as quantitation service antigens, HPV DNA, and in their studies, a core antigen less than four logs and the presence of service antibodies, these biomarkers to guide our therapy to improve the chance of functional cure with what we have uh, in our world for the treatment of chronic hepatitis B. And I think these type of work should be continued. On the other hand, new therapies is being explored to try to cure uh, hepatitis B, that is functional cure. But with the lack of complete understanding of the host immunity and the viral life cycle, I think this is very difficult. This is further compounded by recent studies that are published in the New England Journal of Medicine by the BClear groups, which is the phase 2B randomized investigator unblinded trials. In a sense, a group of highly selected chronic hepatitis B patients were randomized to group one, two, and three. And in the initial 12 weeks, they all received the same treatments of antisense oligonucleotides, BPV. But in this study, it was amazing to find that even in those patients receiving the same treatment for the same durations of therapy for the initial 12 weeks, they have different results on the surface antigen reductions. Chronic hepatitis specifically, chronic hepatitis B patients on nukes with surface antigen reductions greater than three logs by 12 weeks, group three, 16%, group one, 34% and group two, 37%. And this is of statistical significance, even if they receive the same form of treatment for the same durations of therapy. So there might be a unknown confounding factors which is impeding the functional cure of chronic hepatitis B, which needs to be understood. Therefore, functional cure for chronic hepatitis B probably require better biomarkers to make use of the existing therapies to identify subsets of patients of how to treat with nukes with or without the additions of pegylated interferon alpha 2A in sequence combinations of de novo and also to determine the durations. And I think that the incomplete understandings of HPV pathogenesis and the lack of uh, awareness to the presence of CCC DNA and integrated HPV DNA leads to the futile new drug clinical trials 
none of the clinical trials so far have shown satisfactory results. On the other hand, why the applications, as we have just discussed with Dr. John Ward uh, or the CDC US, how we can wider, widen the applications for treatments beyond guidelines as the interims uh, to reduce the morbidity and mortality of those patients with chronic hepatitis B. HPV reactivations remains a very important problem in Asia Pacific regions, as you alluded in the papers uh, uh, offered by the SK Sarin himself. We have an opportunity uh, who work with a group of apostled expert panels, me, myself as chair, co-chair by Professor Yu Ming Long, Grace Wong, and Alexander Thompson, to understand how we can prevent HPV react hepatitis due to HPV reactivations. Many years ago, in 2002, we are the first group at Queen Mary Hospitals to prove that preemptive use of lamivudine can prevent hepatitis due to HPV reactivations in those service engine positive patients who receive cytotoxic chemotherapy. This type of prevent, uh, preemptive approach that is service engine positive patients, we treat them with nukes before they start chemo cytotoxic chemotherapy, drastically reduce the mortality and morbidity related to ACLF. And subsequently, the new drugs is also being tested with the high resistant barriers such as antacavirs and tenovavir. In the reason, in the past few years, we start to see uh, direct acting antiviral agents, pan orals for chronic hepatitis C. But in all those registration trials, they neglect or exclude patients who has co-infected with service antigens. In Taiwan, we have a lot of patients co-infected with hepatitis B and hepatitis C, and so as to speak in other Asia Pacific region. We are the first groups to observe hepatitis due to HPV reactivations in service engine chronic hepatitis C Chinese patient treated with pan oral DAAs. So we have newcomers as a cause for HPV reactivations, which could lead to hepatitis and hepatic failure. The pathogenesis underlying the use of the pan oral DAAs, which leads to HPV reactivation is probably related to the DA therapy against HCVs and HCV induced hyperactive innate immunity against hepatitis B was reduced, resulting in the removal of the suppressions of the HPV. And with the normalizations of the immunity, there is uh, attack on the, the HPV laden hepatocytes leading to HPV um, related uh, hepatitis. In, light, in, uh, in, in response to the new therapies making available in the treatments of various diseases, not just the, the panoros DAs for hepatitis C, uh, our groups have drawn up the algorithms and guidelines published in Hepatology International in 2021. In my practice for chronic hepatitis B, I think that uh, we have learned a lot, a lot of knowledge, data, guidelines, but in my practice, I treat all, except those patients who are, have uh, abnormal ALT, except those patients have undetectable HPV DNA, and they have no fibrosis or advanced fibrosis and no plan for IST or immunosuppressive therapy. HCC surveillance needs to be performed just with ultrasound and alpha fetoprotein every six months. In my medical center, none of my service uh, hepatitis B patients died of liver cancer so far. And I think this is very encouraging. Maybe the guideline itself needs to be revised. With the availability, uh, the cost of the uh, nuclear site analogs coming down, and also so the testing itself, is, uh, the cost is coming down. Last but not least, hepatocellular carcinoma. Unfortunately, with the practice of hepatology, with the understandings and new drugs made available for chronic hepatitis B and also hepatitis C, hepatocellular carcinoma is still a major concern as a practicing hepatologist uh, in Asia Pacific regions. I practiced in Hong Kong and Beijing. Thanks to the enlightenment from Professor Okuda, this picture was taken many years ago with a nice smile. Uh, and uh, enlightened also from the Professor Omata, 
we recently have the, the, uh, made available the uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors as cancer immunotherapy. Indeed, Nobel Prize was awarded to uh, Dr. James Allison and also Dr. Honjo on the importance of the checkpoint inhibitor drugs, which blocks the T cell activities and inhibitor drugs that can release the bricks of T cells at different stages against the cancer cell, CTLA4, PD-1, and PDL one I always uh, take this photo, um, read the book carefully, written by Professor Omata, and uh, I really appreciate his encouragement uh, to, uh, well, relatively younger people, I'm 60 years old already, but um, uh, have been learning from him for more than 20 years. Uh, with the uh, encouragement from Professor Mata and the others, uh, our centers engaged to understand the use of CTLA4 and PDL1 in unresectable hepatocellular carcinoma. And we are glad that the papers was published in the New England Journal of Medicine Evidence and last year, and also results in the registrations of the CTLA4 and uh, DERVA, that is the NTPDL1, as a therapy for unresectable HCC. Based on this Himalaya phase three studies, it is open label multi center global phase three study. Patients greater than 18 years old with unresectable HCC, BCLAC stage B, and also the, uh, Charles Perch A. They were randomized to receive STRIDE. And what is STRIDE? That is CTLA4, one single dose, plus DERVA, that is TPDL1 blocker, every four weeks, compared with DERVA itself and sorifimid. The primary endpoints is overall survival. Our group is very delighted that the primary objective for overall survival was, was achieved with the use of STRIDE, and we can prolong the, the survival of the patients with unresectable HCC. That is, they cannot receive any local regional therapy and the, the tumor cannot be ablated or resected. In my center, more than half of those patients who receive STRIDE still survive more than four years by now. And it is really amazing. And one of them received even curative surgery after the reductions of, after going to complete remissions in Japan. Having said that, the importance of immune checkpoint inhibitors would draw the atten world attention as a new form of therapy for unresectable HCC. Previously, we have sorifimate as the only first line therapy for these patients. Now we have the I'm Brave. Uh, the, the studies were led by the professor um, uh, Zhen Ai Li uh, uh, with the Atazo and Beaver, that is Avastin, and also the Himalaya study showing the importance of STRIDE uh, using one single dose of CTLA-4 plus DERVA every four weeks. In summary, I think that chronic hepatitis B, what we need in the future is a wider applications of antiviral therapy, and enhance functional cure with better biomarkers with either the existing therapy or new therapy. But to understand, to, use, to um, explore the new drugs developments, one needs to understand what the unknown confounding factors as revealed by the BCLAIR studies means. Chromic hepatitis C, we can cure. And for MAFRA, we need evidence-based nomenclature and I'm, I'm glad to see uh, Professor Jacob George to head the Apazo Maffer uh, Maiden group. For HCC, we need better surveillance programs and the systemic therapies uh, to improve survival and even to make it curable for those previously unresectable HCC. My acknowledgement, last but not least, goes to the, a lot of my collaborators, my teachers, um, my students, there's a lot of enjoyments and collaborations. Professor Roger Williams, uh, Professor Massimo Colombo, Professor S.K. Lam, and Professor Sarin, Ray Shinasi, Professor D.S. Chen, and Professor Chen Jian Yun. This is our team. Without their support, what I have done in the 30, past 30 years would be impossible. And with my sincere gratitude to all of them. Last but not least, these are the world, real awardees for this 
Award, Omata, o Okuda Omata Distinguished Award should belong to them. They are practically a pair of twins. And I want to thank my wife, Vanessa, and also Mrs. Omata. This will be my last slide. And this is a topic uh, I use. The greatest scientists are artists as well. And this, I'm dressed in this manner because my wife asked me to do so. And I believe that good science needs to be based on truthfulness, accountability, and credibility. And this is the pillar stone for the development of a puzzle. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for Professor Lau's excellent lecture.